How do you simplify this amino acid into this? Or, when given this version of glucose, can you easily find all the carbon and hydrogen atoms? If organic compounds are mostly made of carbon and hydrogen, with a few other atoms like oxygen or nitrogen, what if we didn't have to draw all the carbons and hydrogens? That's what skeletal structure and this video is all about. Starting with butane, C4H10. We've already learned the condensed formula showing all the groups without bonds, but this doesn't show us what we're looking at, and a Lewis structure or structural formula showing all the atoms and electrons, but this takes way too long, especially if you have to draw it over and over in a mechanism. Skeletal structures gives us a quick and easy way to represent organic molecules. And what's easier than drawing a bunch of lines? Carbons are implied, but never drawn. Because carbons have so many hydrogens, we assume H but never draw, with one exception, as I'll show you later. Show all the bonds except between carbon and hydrogen. Show all heteroatoms, that is everything that's not a carbon or hydrogen. And show all hydrogens on the heteroatoms. If I remove all the carbons and hydrogens, I'm left with nothing. But wait, we do show the carbon to carbon bonds. So we remove the hydrogens and their bonds, remove all the carbons, we're left with a bunch of lines. Remember that sp3 carbons are tetrahedral, so it would actually look more like this. Now if I remove the carbons and hydrogens and extend the bonds just a little, that's a skeletal structure. Oof. How about a faster way? But first, let's clarify. Every line represents a bond between carbon atoms. A tip when starting out, Point with your pen so you can easily identify the carbon atoms. Every angle or intersection is a carbon atom, and every terminus or end is also carbon unless there's a heteroatom, which we'll cover soon. Looking at butane, that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Number your carbon chain, then pen to paper is one, and continue until you reach your target. We have four carbons. I start by putting pen to paper, that's one, two, three, Four. I see a lot of students make the mistake of counting one for the first line they draw, two, three, four. But if you count my carbons, that's actually five. This right here is a bond between carbon one and two rather than drawing the first line and getting a one over here. So make sure you double check. Quick tip, you'll always have fewer bonds than atoms. Here we have four carbons and just three bonds. What about hydrogen? Who cares? We don't need them here. But actually, if your professor asks, or you need them for the molecular formula, use this trick. Since neutral carbons have four bonds, if you don't see four, H makes four. Option one, four minus visible bonds equals hydrogen. If this carbon has two visible bonds, four minus two equals two, I know we have two hydrogen. Option two, just count to four. Here I see one, two, three, four. Here I see two, three, four. Does it matter which way I draw the molecule? Which is the correct line structure for pentane? Actually, they're both correct. Since these carbons are sp3 hybridized with a single or sigma bond, they can rotate in space. How do you tell? Use the highlighter trick. As long as you can highlight from one end to the other without lifting your highlighter, you have a straight chain regardless of direction. Or just count. One, two, three, four, five. What if you're given a longer chain with parentheses in the middle? Option one, draw the Lewis or structural formula. That was way too long. Option one, expand it so you see exactly what's going on. Number the chain and draw the zigzag. Make sure you have the correct number of carbons and you're good to go. Option two is a little trickier, but you'll get it with time. You count directly from your condensed formula. Here I have carbon one. Five CH2s would give me two, three, four, five, six, and this is carbon seven. Or for a linear chain, you can count five, six, and seven. Then you draw it out the same way. What if you have branches coming off the molecule? Here we have a carbon with three methyl groups, another carbon with one methyl group, and the rest of the chain. That's the carbon with three methyls, carbon with one methyl, and the rest of the chain. To draw the liner skeletal structure, we start the same way by numbering the parent chain and drawing our zigzag. I like to number so I know exactly where to put my substituents, and then recognize that even though this carbon appears to have three methyl groups, 
This one on the left is part of the parent chain, so we only have two substituents. That's two methyl groups on carbon two, but do I draw them up or down? Remember that sp3 carbons are 109.5, which on paper looks closer to 120, giving me this as the parent chain, and my substituents facing the opposite direction. Looking at the parent chain here, the point tells me which way to add my substituents. And so carbon two gets two lines going up for the two methyl groups. Carbon three only has one methyl group. And if we were to show both bonds, that would be one bond to methyl and one to hydrogen. But since hydrogens are invisible in line structure, it looks more pleasing to ignore the hydrogen and draw it straight down. The process is the same for rings. Take methyl cyclohexane. Scary mess, right? We number the ring as the parent chain, then draw the lines from one through six. Don't forget the bond between carbon six and number one to close the ring, and the methyl group on carbon one. Isn't this so much less scary? Cyclohexane can also be drawn as a chair conformation, which I cover here. Given two butene, how do I know there's a pi bond here? These two carbons appear to have just three bonds, including hydrogen, which means the fourth is a pi bond. Here's what it looks like. That's three visible bonds where pi makes four. The line structure follows the same process. Number your parent chain, draw the zigzag, and then add one more line for your pi bond. What if I drew my zigzag this way and add the pi bond? Not only are they both correct, this one is trans 2-butene and this one is cis. Triple bonds is where I get really annoyed with professors because if you take something like 2-butyne, Notice there are no hydrogens, which means we have a triple bond. Many professors will draw this the same way as an alkene, but add two lines for the triple bond. This is wrong! SP hybridized carbons are 180 degrees. This means the bond should be linear. To draw an internal alkyne, you draw a straight line, and then add the extra lines for the pi bonds in the middle. This is your pi bond, and these are the two carbon atoms attached on either side. When just starting out, it helps to put an extra dot to remind you, hey, there's a carbon right there. For a terminal alkyne that ends with a triple bond, for example, one butyne, this side extends to carbons three and four, but here we have an invisible hydrogen, so the structure just ends with a triple bond. What if your molecule has a heteroatom, such as nitrogen, oxygen, or even a halogen? Remember the rules? to show all heteroatoms, show all nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and so on. Show all bonds to your heteroatoms and show any hydrogens that appear on the heteroatoms. Take a molecule like propanol. We have a carbon chain with an alcohol. So we start with the carbon chain as before. That's one, two, three. And then we add the alcohol. Oxygen is our heteroatom, so we draw it in. And then we draw a bond from carbon three to oxygen. This line here, is the bond connecting carbon to oxygen. It is not another carbon. We talked about how every angle and every terminus or end is a carbon atom, unless there's a heteroatom there. That makes this a carbon atom, but because this line, which is pretending to be an end, has an oxygen right next to it, that is not a carbon atom, that is simply the bond connecting carbon three to oxygen. Lastly, we show the hydrogen, which is common to draw without the bond, but some professors want to see it. While you typically don't have to show lone pairs, many professors will ask for it, so you may as well get into the habit. Ready to try the line structure for glucose? Not ready for that? There's a lot going on here. What do we do? Here's a tip for your oxygen functional groups. If you have an OH after the carbon, when it's written as CHO, that's a hydrogen on carbon and an oxygen also on carbon for an aldehyde. But if it's oxygen, then hydrogen, it's oxygen on carbon, hydrogen on oxygen for an alcohol. Here we have CHO giving me an aldehyde and then a series of OHs giving me alcohols. Let's do it. First, we number the chain and draw a zigzag of six carbons. Then we put an aldehyde on carbon one and an alcohol each on carbons two through six. Remember I said there was one exception for hydrogen on carbon? It's right here for the aldehyde. It's not required, but it's often drawn. This is correct as is, but you're more likely to see this. What if you're given the skeletal form of a molecule and asked to draw the Lewis or condensed version showing all the atoms and bonds? 
Don't worry, I have so many more skeletal practice problems for you on my skeletal quiz at the end of this video. But first, let's number, and it doesn't matter where you start unless you're naming it. I started from the right for my parent chain with the ring as a substituent. Next, draw your carbons and number again so all the substituents are in the right place. I see a methyl group coming out of one and two, so I'll add a carbon. I have a cyclohexyl group, a ring, coming out of carbon one, so I'll add six carbons. And then I fill in the hydrogens using the rule H makes four. That's one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four, and so on. To condense it even more, I'll look at what I see, draw the groups, and for cyclohexane, we'll just use C6H11. That's CH3, CH2, a methyl group on the next carbon, a methyl group on the next carbon, and the ring. What about redrawing this, showing all the atoms, or this one in line structure? Try these and more on my Skeletal Structures practice quiz. Just comment quiz or visit layerforsci.com skeletal linked below.